a couple of questions. High Representative, you have the floor. Thank you, Maya. Uh, Ina, first of all, it's a pleasure uh, to welcome you here and to um, have this meeting together under the chairmanship of uh, uh, the Foreign Minister of Norway, my good friend, Ine. Uh, we decided together uh, to convene this first ever extraordinary meeting of the Ad Hoc Liaison Committee, uh, which is the International Donor Group for Palestine here in Brussels today. Uh, the meeting has been held at the ministerial level, which shows strong interest and a shared sense of purpose in the international community and also in the region. It is also the first opportunities for the parties, uh, and uh, not only uh, for the parties, but also for the partners in the region and international community to sit together since the December announcement by President Trump on Jerusalem. Uh, it is an opportunity we all have to engage, uh, to have everybody around the same table, and for us to use our convening power and to put it at the service of peace and security in the Middle East and beyond. The basis and objective of our engagement is and remains the two-state solution, with Jerusalem as future capital of both states, the state of Israel and the state of Palestine. This is a position based on the Oslo Accords and on international law, in particular the relevant UN Security Council resolutions. The raison d'etre of the Ad Hoc Liaison Committee is and remains the shared objective of two states solution. Uh, we must uh, always remind ourselves, and we will do that today, it's a good moment for doing that again, that the Ad Hoc Liaison Committee has never meant to substitute political progress by economic development. It has always meant to accompany, to facilitate, to underpin political progress. And the Ad Hoc Liaison Committee and the two-state solution for us are two sides of the same coin. And today we will look together with our partners on ways to resume a political process that would lead to this two-state solution. Any framework for negotiations must be multilateral and must involve all players, all partners that are essential to this process. A process without one or the other would simply not work, would simply not be realistic. This is why we are happy to see that uh, the quartet uh, is continuing to meet. We had a quartet uh, meeting just uh, a few weeks ago. We are, as the European Union, engaging within the quartet with the United States, the Russian Federation, and the United Nations. And we're looking at ways uh, to closely associate with work some of our Arab uh, partners, uh, namely Jordan or Egypt and Norway itself. In the past uh, few weeks, we have been, uh, as the European Union, extremely engaged with the parties. You know that I had the pleasure to host uh, first Prime Minister Netanyahu here in Brussels and then President Abbas. We held, as I said, a quartet and voice meeting in Jerusalem a couple of weeks ago. And we are in constant contact with our partners in the region. And we're convening this meeting today with a regular one that will follow up uh, in March. We need to maintain the political horizon for the two-state solution, as we believe there is no alternative that uh, would be both politically viable and sustainable, and that would fulfill the legitimate aspirations of both parties, including the legitimate security concerns of Israel. In the meantime, there are many practical steps that can advance on the ground, and we will look at these steps also today. Continue our support for the Palestinian Authority, continue our support for UNRWA, work for the security of all, because uh, we know the more we can achieve progress on the ground, the more this can help prevent violence, and the more this can help also resume a political process. So in this context, we believe it is important that the Palestinian Authority is committed to unite the West Bank and Gaza under one single and legitimate authority. And in this regard, we strongly support the indispensable Egyptian role and engagement that we value as extremely positive. The political situation in Gaza is directly linked to the security situation in the entire region and to our common fight against terrorism. And we believe Israel's legitimate security concerns must be met also in that context. We are thinking first and foremost, obviously, to the population in Gaza. The daily life of citizens has been very difficult for too long time, and this despite large international humanitarian help, including by the European Union. 
The European Union and its member states are collectively by far the largest donor, including uh, through UNRWA, to the Palestinians, but also bilaterally. And we are ready to increase our support if the political conditions are met, for instance, through the redeployment of the border assistance mission of the European Union, UBAM, RAFA, or through immediate help for hospitals. And I'm glad today to announce that we have just adopted a new package of 42.5 million euros, including activities in East Jerusalem and support to the building of a democratic and accountable Palestinian state through targeted policy reforms, fiscal consolidation, reinforcing businesses and small and medium enterprises, strengthening of Palestinian civil society and providing access to water and energy. Uh, this comes uh, on top of uh, several other packages of support, uh, including 107 million euros provided to UNRWA. This to show that together with the political purpose of this meeting, there is also a lot of concrete projects and concrete support that is going on, thanks to an excellent cooperation we have established on an international level, and I would like to thank, to conclude, Norway for its leadership uh, and uh, um, um, strength uh, in uh, leading this work together with us and others, and uh, reassure once again the parties, first of all, the citizens on the ground, the people of the region, and our regional and all our international partners that they can count on the European Union.